Roxo Media House. Spikerman hits it hard to straightaway center field. Brunson on the run, makes the catch. Had to leap at the last second. Luke Boyer's leading off with a line drive to left center field. It's going to dunk in for a base hit. Oklahoma was here, line to center field. That's a base hit for Curtis Brown. Oklahoma's won the last two series. After a double play, and he ropes this one into right field for a base hit. Two runs will score. TCU retakes the lead. A big turn by Maxwell over at first. And we are back with another episode of State of the Frogs with Coach Kirk Sarlos here at Lefty Stadium in the coach's office. The man in charge, Kirk Sarlos. Uh, traveled day today. You packed up? I'm a late packer. You know, I don't. I'm not really the uh, the early packer. I'm the guy that kind of. Uh, I know what I need. You know, we got two night games, so not having to pack a lot. So I'm a light packer, late packer, light packer, and but you, never forget. And you you learn that over time as well, because I, I everybody overpacks your first couple of trips. You bring yeah. your entire locker, and it's way too much. And yeah, especially when you have two night games. You got a Friday night game. You got a Saturday night game. You don't. I, I brought one pair of pants, two shirts. Change of underwear and some socks. That's all we go. That's all you need. That's, that's all, you, all need. you need. And and maybe a potentially another shot, another shirt to change up the mojo if things go the direction that you don't want them to. But sure. Well, you made the comment as we we're coming in here three and five since we started doing this. So mm-hmm. it's been it been a tough been a tough couple of weeks to start um, Big Twelve play. We'll talk about the trip coming up to Stillwater here in a minute. But uh, recapping just a little bit, dropping two or three at Kansas, and then obviously a tough weekend here against Oklahoma. After such a good start, it's quite the opposite, right? And you made the comment last time we were talking: things are never as good as they th- good as they seem. Things are never as bad as they seem. Mm-hmm. What type of message goes on when when you go through a couple of weeks like this to the team? And and obviously we know this well, but I'm assuming the focus just has to be on one game at a time, trying to play good baseball on this pitch. Yeah, exactly. It's just like when we were 13 and 0. It was about you know the process of you know game by game and and the little things. The little things add up to you know, win or lose ball games. So, uh, getting back to that, like we we were doing when we were winning, we were getting, we were staying focused on that. Now that we've lost a little bit, hey, let's get make sure our focus is back on that. Um, and so we got to you know we got to play all we got to play better better in all three areas: pitch, hit, defense, all three areas. But in all actuality, I feel like our back's against the wall. I mean, you have a bad weekend this weekend, and you have a big hole to dig yourself out of in terms of Big Twelve play. You know. Uh, if you look at a 16 and five record from the outside, Hey, everything's great. Everything's perfect. But you're looking at it inside of the big 12 and you're one and five right now. Um, not so good. So we gotta, we have to do a really good job of going up there and playing good baseball, um, and get ourselves back to, you know, playing TCU style baseball. You know, it's really interesting too. You look at the big 12 standings through the first couple of weeks of conference play, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, TCU right. in the bottom four mm-hmm. and have the most wins actually in total, as you just mentioned. So it's been an interesting start. And with with you know the additional teams into the conference this year, still 24 games left in conference play. Yeah. A lot of lot of time left to go, but you're exactly right. And so as you're talking about playing good baseball, things along those lines, are there, are there any discussions about just – picture reminding folks hey where are we actually now and it's been a tough stretch but there's still a lot of the season left to go yeah there is i mean we had you know a meeting on wednesday and and spoke about that um just in terms of where we're at um coach bruce had a meeting with the the hitters in terms of hey how do we stack up against other power five offenses to kind of just give a bird's eye view of where, where do things stand um we're doing that today with the pitching staff so both both sides of the ball are kind of getting a, an understanding of what the facts are saying, what the statistics are saying in terms of uh, what we're doing well, what we can do better at, and I think it gives us, you know, it's more of a, um, it's not as you know, it's subjective. It's not as as subjective because it's it's factual. It's numbers, and so guys are able to kind of see that, and then we can put forth a plan of, hey, we need to get better in this area. Uh, we're doing good in this area. We need to get better over here. So I think it gives us a better idea and gives them, our players, an idea of the things that we need to do to get better within the game just from a statistical standpoint. Yeah, on the offensive side of things, it, for the first 13 games, felt like every opportunity where you had a runner mm-hmm. on first and second and two outs, you got that hit in the gap and those two runs scored. Or mm-hmm. you know, bases loaded, infield drawn in, 
you had the big hit that really busted the game open. Yep. And, and it, just for the last, you know, last eight games, felt like that just hasn't been there. It's been, yeah. there have been moments, there have been times where that presented himself. Do you get the sense that, that guys are fighting so hard to make that happen mm-hmm. and you start to squeeze the bat a little bit tighter? Yeah, for sure. I think when, when things are going a little bit difficult for you, I think you, you try a little bit too, too hard. You know, you're trying to get it done instead of maybe trusting the next guy behind you. Um, and so when that starts happening, that starts creeping in, you know, it's, it's tough to shake sometimes when, cause these guys care, they put a lot of time and effort into, you know, this season. And so they do care and sometimes they care too much. And, and so some of that is just, Hey, trust in our training and trust in the guy behind you and knowing that it's not just you, you got, you know, you got the whole team behind you coaching staff included. And it's, you know, just go out and play. And not make it too much bigger than what it is. And I think at the beginning of the year, you saw a lot of that. You know, and then I think a little bit of expectations crept in. We're 13-0, and and we got to play perfect, and this. And I think you, you got a little bit of a, you know, an idea of what it looks like when, when guys start trying too hard. And, and uh, so it's our job to get them back on track more than anything mentally. And that's what the that's what the best teams do. Obviously, you've seen it time and time again. It, when, when you do get punched in the face, yeah. like this a little bit. Can you respond? Get up off the mat and get back to it. I do want to touch on, you know, somebody who is, really has seemed at least so far to just even keel down the mm-hmm. middle. Logan Maxwell has been really impressive to yeah. watch the plate. And and after a couple of years where had some injury troubles and things along, it just never really felt like he got in that groove. What's it been like just to see him really put it all together through the first twenty some odd games? Yeah, I mean that's his personality. Like if you he. Logan probably plays as close to his personality as anyone I've ever been around. Kind of just a steady Eddie. Like, you don't know if he's having an unbelievable day or if he's having the worst day of his life. Like, it's pretty much status quo every single day. And that's kind of what his, his season has been so far and his at-bats and everything. It's just kind of steady Eddie, man. It's He's going to give you a good at-bat pretty much every time. And, um, you know, we're trying to figure out where's the best spot in the lineup for that. You know, do you lead him off? Do you hit him in the two-hole because he can do some stuff? Do you hit him, you know, do you put your best hitter in the in the four hole? I mean, so we're just kind of, the big thing is we're trying to figure out where to put him in the lineup. And part of that is putting the other pieces around it. Yeah, and it seems like those those other pieces starting to put together some good at-bats as mm-hmm. well. Again, we can talk more about that in the weekend heading up here in a little bit. First, we're going to do a student question, though, another episode, episode two it. of the student question. So we'll be right back to you with that after a word from our sponsor, The Squire Shop. Welcome to The Squire Shop. We are locally owned and operated since 1994. We specialize in the finest men's clothing that the market has to offer at affordable prices with unbelievable service. We do uh, custom clothing all the way to more casual, Peter Millar, Johnny O, kind of everything. Well, my dad's the owner, so I've been around retail my whole life. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's the best boss I'll ever have. I know that. We love our TCU community. They have been so good to us. Come see us today. Go Frogs! Welcome back inside the TCU baseball offices here at Lupton Stadium. It's time for our student question. Coach, this will come to you from Katie. Hey guys, my name is Katie Hong. I am from Keller, Texas, and I'm majoring in finance. This is a question for Coach Sarlos. Coach Sarlos, you have so much swag and so many uniforms. How do you choose what to wear? Great question, Katie. We do have a lot of swag. Um, you know, the uniforms are new this year, so we've made some, some design changes. Uh, spent a lot of time on that. I think they've come out. Um, really well in terms of, you know, the style. And so how do we pick it? Sometimes, you know, it's in order, you know, white on Monday, pinstripes on, or white on Friday, pinstripes on Saturday, and then obviously the, the throwback on, on Sunday, but sometimes it's up to the starting pitcher. So, um, kind of all over the place, but Tuesday's usually going to be black tops. And then, uh, on the weekend, it's kind of, uh, in order of white pinstripe. And then the throwback. And then on the road, it's similar. Gray, pinstripe, and then usually purple top on Sunday. But there are a lot of options. So so I'm curious, do you ever have any pitchers that are just clamoring to wear the old throwback that goes down past the past the elbow no. with the baggy pants? No. No, well actually, you know, student assistant coach Brian Howard, I thought, probably looked the best in He those. did. <laughs> you know, weighing in at about 182 pounds at six nine. And the uh, the sleeve going halfway down his arm it was a great look, but yeah, no, these fit a little bit better. Well, Chuck and I have talked about this. There's a there, 
this this era seems to be a lot less subtle than baseball used to be. There's a lot of different creative uh, creative decision making out there. For sure, baseball. we actually this color purple we actually looked at kind of like a what would a all lavender uniform look like? Boy, it did not look good. So that was <laughs> that was kind of that was nixed really really fast. So we we spent a lot of time going over a lot of different options and but we stayed pretty traditional. There's there's a lot of time and effort that goes into that. It is a big decision to make what you're going to be wearing out there and everything. So thank you for that, Katie. Uh, we're going to take another break here, and when you come back, we will have a very special guest on the other side. Energy does everything for us. It's all encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters our future. We don't just talk about what's needed, we focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. Oh, thank you again very much, Katie. Appreciate the question. Um, so we've got a guest today, and it's not often that you get to actually use the phrase VIP. This is definition of VIP. Mer true. Meredith Montgomery, <laughs> The assistant AD for baseball administration. That I get is that the right title now. now. Yes. yes. Well, and, and that you get that title because you're here for 800 games. So you sell you, you sell it. Stick around long enough. You, you celeb just... you celebrated that over over the weekend. Got a graphic. You got a shout out on the scoreboard and everything. Yes. Yeah. Talk about so 800 games. I'm assuming you did not necessarily intend for this to be what you were doing for the last several years. Talk a little bit about how you got into into the program and, and what's kept you around so long. Yeah, so I was actually really surprised when uh, Brandy and Taylor let me know that I was coming up on my 800th game because I was like, that couldn't be possible. I graduated a couple years ago. Um, but what got me going, I just, I kind of fell into my lap. I was like right place, right time of how I started as a GA. Um, got really lucky that 2010 was my first year with the team. We go to Omaha. I decide like, clearly I'm the good luck charm. I should stick around exactly. and do this. Um really have loved it love working with like the different coaching staffs that have come through it changes my job is the same but like the people change every year whether it's the players or the staff mix-ups things like that so it keeps it interesting every year and then getting paid to watch baseball never hurts yeah, that's not, that's not yes. a bad gig that you have and, and if, you, if you're unclear as to exactly what it is that um, if you follow tcu baseball for any number of years since 2010 you've heard meredith's name inevitably anything for this this program does not run without what Meredith does and you'll hear anybody who's ever played coached been associated with it say that uh, what is it a little bit just day to day what might it be like what do things look like what fires are you putting out on a day to day <laughs> yeah basis? it kind of depends day to day I would say most players say that because I'm a big part of the communication so I'm the one like texting them their schedule Correct. and reminding them where they need to be when they need to be there um, so from that end they would probably say that off obviously also feed the team. So I know that's a big, <laughs> big thing. Um, a big part of my job is helping like be a liaison for our incoming guys. So it's been awesome since um, Coach Sarlos got the job, we were able to hire Cooper as the director of operations. And so he and I both tackle the operations. So we've kind of split the job in half, allowing us both to like put a lot more into it, I think. Um, so I help onboard our incoming first year students, whether they be first year transfers, all that. I'm helping them with their, uh, make sure they get their application done, housing, um, any, all the paperwork and things that they need to do, their physicals, getting here for summer school, dealing with um, parents, questions, all of that. Um, I also help run our diamond club. So donors, um, running the luncheons, getting out the benefit package, communications there. Um, and then another big part, like this time of year, is just travel. So when to get on the bus, yep. when <laughs> practices, making an audible like today of moving things around when rain's coming. So it's just kind of putting out fires as they come. I've learned over the years, you pretty much can always get something done if you just ask enough people and keep trying. So well, and that's this is why though that's why that we say and specifically players you hear it you hear that phrase of like this doesn't run without you because you're the first thing that we know coming into the program and this eyes wide open you're stepping into college baseball I have no idea what it is 
Um, so that's you, that's the role that you have played in, in our eyes. Well, you have to say that because I got you on an airplane once without a driver's license. Well, so. we did not need to go there at all. <laughs> you did, and it is possible. Now we know that's possible. You're welcome. If you try hard enough, you're you welcome can for that. fly without a license. We can maybe get into that in a subsequent episode. <laughs> uh, but we made the trip happen. So uh, your role as, as a woman in, in a male sport like this uh, absolutely would be in the minority of that. Uh, and, and I know that you've got a community of folks that, that are in similar spots to you, but what, what has kept you, you know, so in love with TCU and, and in the spot where it would be very easy, you've got male coaches, you've got male players, umpires, I mean, all the support staff is predominantly male. What have you found here that has allowed you to feel comfortable and frankly thrive in your role over the last several years? So TCU is a great place to work, first of all. I just love being around TCU. I obviously went to school here, so I'm a little biased overall. Um, but it's a great community. Um, working with Brandy Davidson, she's honestly who gave me my start. Like my freshman year of college, I went into her office and asked how I can help with the baseball program. So she kind of is the one who got me into this. Um, so she's obviously around the program, so that's great. Um, when I first was hired on, I was actually connected with um, Tracy. At, she's in Houston, um, so she'll be up here next weekend. Um, took a phone call with her. She had worked with Coach Whitting um, previously at Houston, so she had been doing it a long time talk to her about what it was like being a woman working in baseball some of that and then what's been really cool is to be the one that gets to like carry that on now that I've done it so long I have women reaching out to me so I'll always take phone calls answer any questions kind of walk through when someone gets hired as a new director of operations or in any role kind of with the baseball team just give them my advice so we've been lucky like for a while I think we had like four women director of ops in the big 12 it's fallen off a little but Carly's at UT um, she and I text sometimes so it's just in general the operations role is very supportive of each other like men or women um, so like you always have those like group chats especially getting into this time of year where you're kind of like okay, here we go. Like we're getting into the thick of things. So you have your ops people like at other schools and then also just within TCU, like Thomas Monagle at, with men's basketball, he and I like we'll reach out to each other about questions about food or flying or anything like that. So it's just an awesome support system, I would say, in that group of operations. And you haven't been asked to throw batting practice yet? Is it? No. no. So luckily, when that rule changed, I was like, we can count me out. Um, I would like to volunteer everyone else but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 800 games, Meredith. Congratulations. Uh, I, I know it's a milestone that you wanted everybody to celebrate publicly. Yeah. And, and we're leading the charge on that. Uh, we As for, former players, I speak for as well we love you and thank you so much for all that you have done for us um so meredith montgomery assistant ad for baseball administration here at tc baseball place doesn't exist without her thanks so, for having me on come back up after this after a word from uh, the squire shop our sponsor we will be talking to coach kirk sarlos about the oklahoma state series here coming up this weekend you know we wouldn't be able to do the things we we're able to do this year without the flying t club so we got to continue to, to get people involved it's it's more important right now than it's ever been flying t is special it's 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 the best thing that i've encountered in college it allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover if people like winning invest in in, in the Flying T Club and NIL. This is really great for athletes and just for future students who want to come here and be a part of something special, and I just think it's great. Uh, it just means a lot to us players to, to see all the sport, and uh, it's, it's huge. Welcome back one more time into the TCU baseball offices. Coach, we just had a chance to talk to Meredith. This place doesn't operate without her. And so um, looking into the weekend, Going up to Stillwater, always a tough place to go and mm -hmm. play. Um, it feels like every one of those series between Horn Frogs, Cowboys, it's tooth and nail. It's never a sweep one way. It's and especially now, you touched on this a little bit earlier. Both of these teams at the bottom of the Big mm -hmm. Twelve standings right now. I feel like there's going to be a lot on the line up there this weekend. Absolutely. Every time we we play, you know, it seems like there's you know championships or uh, conference championships on the line, and this is you know a little bit different early in the season um, and both of us being at the bottom of the conference standings. So, you know, I think there's going to be a little bit different feeling to it, but it's going to be the exact same. It's always going to be great baseball. Uh, it's going to be, um, you know, well coached baseball on their side. They do a great job. Uh, but I think the big thing for us is to go up there and not, it's not so much about who we're playing. We got to get back to playing 
the way we're capable of playing. And so, um, you know, that's that's our goal when we go up there. You know, I, ha I have to imagine that that's you know that's the message. It's all about internally. It's it's what can we do to be be playing better baseball and get things mm -hmm. clicking back to the first couple of weeks. You know, thinking about going on the road like this, this is one that you know initially, as you look at the schedule preseason before any other games are played, you've got an allotment to drop some games. Is that sense now that the fact that you really got to flip it on and there's a sense of urgency here coming out? Well, I think I mean if you just look, I, I haven't spoke with the team about this, but if you look in just history in years past, I mean when we've won conference championships, you know I think two years ago regular season, I think we were like. I don't know, 17 and eight or something like that, where we had lost eight ball games in conference. And so we're sitting at five. Now, obviously we have, um, you know, one more weekend series for conference play this year. So you got three more games. Um, but you, like I said, last year we backed ourselves uh, up against a wall and when we were 23 and 20, we're 16 and five, but I feel like we're in the same spot. You know, we're one and five in conference play and kind of backed ourselves into a little bit of a corner. So I'm I'm excited to see how our guys respond to that. A um, lot of a lot of winners in our locker room. A lot of winners in our in our dugout. Um, and I'm not worried about their mentality in terms of this little hiccup. It's about, like you said, it's about getting back to what we need to do, and not so much about um, who we're playing or what the situation is. We just got to play good baseball. If we play, play good baseball, uh, we'll go up against anybody in the country for sure and it makes it it makes it really simple right you don't have to worry about what you know the oklahoma state in this instance are doing obviously we know what we know the way that coach holiday coaches mm -hmm. it's you know they're a team offensively especially in their own ballpark now they're going to try and be relentless with it moving guys around and, and trying to make you make the mistakes i have to think in this situation and especially from a pitching perspective you're not trying to do anything different than the tcu game plan of what it is that you want to do attacking the bottom of the zone with quality strikes absolutely and i think you know, we won a ball game on Tuesday, but wasn't wasn't the way we wanted to win. You know, you you, you walk ten guys and hit a guy. I mean, you do that, uh, you're going to lose a lot of games. And so we did a good job of pitching with traffic and not giving up hits. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the command of the baseball, uh, was not not what we were looking for. And so a lot of it is, yeah, it's getting back to. Uh, pitching with aggression and not so much chasing the strikeout. We I think we're we rank in the top twenty five in the country in terms of strikeouts per nine innings. So we have the stuff. The stuff is there, but are we chasing that a little bit too much? Is that our end goal? Our end goal is not to get a strikeout. Our end goal is to um, throw quality pitches and and get them out and and to do that over and over again. And if it's a strikeout, great. But a lot of times strikeouts raise your pitch count right. and next thing you know um you get to three two because you're trying to punch the guy out and then you end up walking a guy that you got to oh two real fast and so you know the mentality is let's see how quickly we can get to two strikes and then let's go ahead and finish people off whether that's a strikeout or or whatever it may be that um but we got to get back to being a little bit more offensive on the on the on the mound in terms of being aggressive well, it'll be a great opportunity this this weekend. Mm -hmm. Horn Frogs 16 and 5 right now, heading into their third conference series. They'll head up to Stillwater here this afternoon. Coach, safe travels. Good luck. Uh, this has been another episode of State of the Frogs with Coach Kirk Sarlos, presented to you by the Squire Shop, and we'll be back to you with another episode here soon. Roxo Media House.